I'm a character PD. Um, I was at um, Pixar for the last 13 years, and then I've gone out to my own since last September. And um, I mean, I've been a long time moto person. Uh, you guys probably, probably have known. Um, and I did do that rigging course. Um, but I get this question, you know, I, I leave Pixar and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna build a rigging course and I'm gonna use moto. And, and they're always like, rigging and moto? What are you talking about? I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. And, and to give you a little bit of, you know, background, you know, over the last 13 years, and actually it's more like 15 years, because I started doing rigging in a professional manner at Rhythm and Hughes. Rhythm and Hughes and Pixar both solved problems in the same way structurally. It was uh, a, a layered deformation approach. It was, you know, you build your shapes up over time. It's very different than, say, a skin weight based system. Um, and Moto has an order of operations based deformation stack. So for me, um, it's funny, I, I reached out to the foundry pretty much right away and I was like, you know, I'm thinking about doing an update to the rigging course and um, I've got some ideas on the technology side, which I'll show here at the end. Um, but also, it's like, you know, I, I really want to kind of break the seal a bit on how to think about characters in this way. So, you know, what are the benefits of Moto for me from this perspective? And I've already mentioned the first one is the deformation system. To my knowledge, it's the only out of the box system, you know, that you can commercially buy that allows you to deal and, and structure your deformations in this ordered fashion. Um, and there are a lot of benefits to that, and we'll, we'll get into it. Um, the weighting workflow is very unique. Um, allows you to work with weights in ways that, um, again, a traditional skin weight based system just doesn't allow you to do. Um, mesh independence, and this is really big, you know, some of these guys have already talked about assemblies and bringing some pieces together, and the rigs I'm going to show you are all these assemblies. They're self-contained um, rigs that you can add to your scene, and then you just add the points of your mesh into it, and it starts to work. So it allows you to build these systems that are reusable in a way that other systems don't allow you to do. It's sort of it's a, it's a build script without the script. You know, you're allowed to build this system and reuse it. It's artist focused, and it's funny. You know, this doesn't mean necessarily somebody that's sitting, you know, freelancing in their garage, which is nothing wrong with that, by the way. <laughs> the the um, or or the big studio, but it like really, it does get out of your way. You don't need um, you know a ton of pipeline TDs to, to to get the work done. It doesn't mean that it doesn't fit into a pipeline. I mean, I used Moto for years as a modeler when I was at Pixar, so that's not a problem. And the other is that, you know, I think the, mound, the, the foundry is motivated. Like, they really want Moto to go somewhere. That's re, it's this time to, like, really take this forward. And so I think my interests with what the foundry was doing really kind of meshed together, which is good. So, okay. So let's talk about layer deformations. So this is um, Zoe, actually. You'll see more of her character. But what I've done here is I've put three deformers together, a mouth slide, a mouth lift, corner lift, and then a cheek expansion. And by just layering these deformers together, I'm able to get these really complex shapes. So you can imagine something like this with a skin weight system is going to take a lot more than just three deformers to get your shapes out of. So there's a lot of control. Um, and there's also the jaw open, which is just a rotate, right? So that's what's going on there. So we'll get more into that, but, but really, there is a ton of flexibility and control you get when you use an order of operations based deformation system. And it's just, there's no other place that you can do that commercially out there now. The next step is um, being able to isolate and diagnose issues. Whenever you're dealing with rigs in a, in a production environment, when you've got a client, you've got a deadline, you're always trying to figure out what the heck's going on, right? There's, you're you're going to find something that breaks. You're going to find a shape that messes up or whatever. By being able to, and you can see over here on the left, you've got the stack there. Actually, did it not switch? Oh, hold on. Whoa, back. I don't think it's playing the right video. I'm just going to point it out. So, so we've got our deformers. And you can see up here that we have our deformer stack. And I can, by hitting these icons, I can actually deactivate different parts of the rig at one at a time. So if I wanted to, I could say, well, take the cheek puff out and take the, the mouth corner up out just so I can see the slide. I don't have to turn off any rigging. I don't have to pull any weights out of anything. I don't have to do any of that crap. All I want to do is I want to see how this one thing is working. So if that is causing my problem or not, I can go in and fix that one thing and then move on. So the system inherently allows you to diagnose issues in a way that other systems don't because it's very easy to just deactivate sections that you don't want to see. All right, unbounded weights. You're killing me, man. I stopped playing the right video. Um, 
All right, we'll go there. I'm gonna talk about unbounded weights and we'll skip that there. What does that mean? And I'm gonna illustrate on my nice round head. Um, if I open my jaw, skin on the top of your head moves, right? So in this system, I can set my weight so when I open my jaw, that it actually, the weights fade all the way up into the top of my head. I'm not worried about is it crossing a joint boundary, and you know, what if I have a joint here for my cheek and a joint here for my jaw and I'm moving things down? I don't have to worry about that. I make the jaw do what it needs to do by itself and I cascade its weights all the way up. And when I say subtle, I mean just a little bit. That means every time the character opens its mouth, every time the character moves a mouth corner or whatever, you've got all these little tiny movements that are happening all over the place. And I'm not worried about is the joint weighting right or am I fading weights between one thing or another? I'm able to make the jaw look good I'm able to have the mouth corner look good. And then when I do that, and, and you start animating your character and things are moving, all of a sudden you get all these little subtle movements all over the face. It just feels more alive. You just notice it in a way, again, that's not impossible in a skin weight system, but a lot harder to do. So and then this comes to mesh independence. What does this mean? So with both of these characters here, this is something I did a long time ago, and I've rebuilt it using the same mouth rig for that character that I used for this one. That means that I was able to build a single component, an assembly that is a mouth rig, and by using weight containers and other things, I'm able to reuse that same rig in multiple places for two very different looking faces. So if you build a library of systems, and that's what this thing is here, and as I've been building this character rig for the Rigging Master Course 3, you know, I'm building all these little pieces. I'm building a cheek rig, I'm building a lid rig, and eyes and all these little controllers, you know, being able to invert things, you know, normalize length. I'm just, I'm building all these little bits that I then combine together. And uh, though I, I know we're being recorded, you can see that I've got Voltron here on my face rig. So yeah, the, it's a bunch of small rigs that come together into one big massive rig. Um, and only the 80s kids will understand that. Um, so assemblies. So, this idea of add, fit, weight, finish, and what does that mean? And this is kind of a culmination of all this stuff, is that I can add my rig to my scene, I fit the rig into the right place, I add weights into my weight containers, and then I finish off the look either using uh, morph containers to finalize my shapes or, to, uh, um, or just refine my weights the way I need to be. Again, this is something where you can build this library of rigs and reuse them over and over again. And it gets even better when you think, once you've rigged your character all the way through, and when I say character, it could be anything. It, this, this idea works with design, it works with characters, it works with assets, it's anything. The idea is, once I have all the weighting and everything done here, if my topology is sound, I could reuse this for another asset again, and all of the weights will stick with it. There's a bunch of new tools in 13.1. I can literally take this mesh and push it into another, as long as the topology is the same. It doesn't matter about the point order or anything. So in this case, once you've done all this work once, in a single day, I could take this character, re take a new shape, refit it, and have it layout ready. 70% ready to go. And then you spend your time in that last 70 to 100% working on the art of this character and less on the tech. I'm gonna talk a little bit about containers here, but this, this shows me working on the nose rig. It's a, a little time lapse, but the whole behavior of the rig is done. I, I, it's already wired up, and all I do is I take the points in the nose, this case, and I just add them to my weight container. I just go in there and I say, I take these points, I add them in, they add in at a value of one, and then I go through and I start changing the weighting. So now I'm, I'm taking the rig that I fit, and I'm, it's already set up, the system's ready, and then I'm cleaning it up and I'm making that nose look right for that character. And this is that whole, again, that whole mesh independence idea. And it's something that really, Moto is the only, again, commercial application out there that allows you to do it this way. Um, and there's a lot more to containers, which I will cover in the training in a real way. And to add to this in 13.1, which will be out soon, there's morph containers. So not only can you take weighting information and extract that and separate it from your rigs, you can also take shape information. So now you can set up complex behaviors that are just waiting for you to add points and shape corrections in. So you know you do an elbow and, and you're always gonna end up doing a, a shaping to keep that out because the rotation's not gonna look right. So you're dealing with the joint and you're rotating it 90 degrees and you're saying, do I wanna ease in, ease out? You can set all that behavior up ahead of time. You've got a single container waiting. You rotate your arm, throw points in your morph container and you just sculpt it into shape and you're done. So this kind of workflow is really, really powerful. Which leads to sort of 
rigging duality, what does that mean? Is that in a lot of cases, and, and everybody here will agree that rigging is hard. Like doing, doing a really good job and building a really high-end rig, or even, even not a high-end rig, it's hard work. Because you're dealing with both the technology side, that video is supposed to be playing, but whatever. Um, the, uh, you know, you've got this complex system that you've got to build, the technology of what, how things need to move and whatever. But that's where you want to get to. You want to get to the point where you're just making shapes. You want to spend your time making art. You don't want to spend your time dealing with the tech. So part of what I'm doing is I'm trying to build these rigs up in a way, and they'll be part of the course, so that TDs out there, artists out there, can focus less on the technology of rigging and spend a lot more time on the art. So they can spend time making shapes. They can spend time bringing characters to life. Um, and it'll be more than characters, but you know, just not having to focus on how hard it is to even get things to move at all in the right way. And with the idea of the mesh independence, you know, you literally can drag these rigs into any scene and use them. Oh, hey, I just had to hit the button again. Now it's working. <laughs> See, I'm doing this really great thing. I'm super great with technology, but uh, clicker. Um, so anyway, there's this whole idea. So this sort of leads into what am I doing with KiteString? And KiteString is the name of my um, training company. And it's really building on what I did with the Rigging Master Course and trying to create a resource that helps artists get art done in a real, like, in a real way. And, and that's the whole thing. It's like get, bringing ideas down to earth to get things done. Like, as, a, as an artist, I don't necessarily need to watch two hour video. I, I want the one minute that's gonna give me the one piece of information I need to get my work done. And so the system is designed to allow you to index into these videos and get information you need. So every, and again, if you're used to the Rigging Master Course, some of this will, will look very familiar. Um, but the idea is you're gonna have you know, answers and qu questions, a fact for each video. Um, you're gonna have resources, so all your files that would go along with that video are always attached to that. And, and I say video, but eventually it'll be more than, it'll be independent. It won't necessarily be video, it could be a PDF. It could be um, an audio file, it could be a, a cascading piece of images, like a slideshow. It's really about the information you're trying to learn. Um, and then markers, so, and, and this I think is honestly the kind of the biggest innovation in the site, is that each marker can have its own set of tags, its own set of files, and its own set of information. So that means if you're searching for something, I, I could be doing this interview, right? I've covered techniques, I've covered uh, concepts, I'm, I, maybe I did an interview or whatever. There's a lot of different ideas that you can cover in, in even 20 minutes of a recording. But what I can say is at the 15 minute mark, I talk about a technique and I can tag it as a technique and what piece is in there, and this is the file you use to understand that technique. So it allows an artist to record a long p video, but as, a, as somebody trying to get the information, they can index in, get exactly what they need, see samples and all that. And then lastly, each video is going to have the instructor going, here are the things that are related to what you're trying to learn. And we'll go back to that elbow example. Before you could even get to the point of making a shape correction on an elbow, you need to know what a joint is. You need to understand what rotations are. You need to understand what weighting is, sculpts, morphs, all that stuff. <clears throat> so I know that when I'm covering a high-end topic or even, a, even a, you know, a basic thing, that here are all the other things that you need to know. So as you're learning and growing and doing things, you can see all the related bits. So I really want to change the way people get in, and mostly for artists like us, to get in there, get that information, and then get out and get your work done. Now, yeah, you can, there'll be classes and courses, so if you're a student and you just want to walk down a path that I've guided for you, it'll be there too. More than anything, I just want the answer to the question I have, and I want to get in there and get out. Okay, so, Kestering is not going to just be me. So, um, very first off, we're going to have all of William Vaughn's uh, videos, which was 700 at the time, it's like, what, 800 now? The dude's a machine. So, so we're gonna literally, all those videos are gonna be here. They'll be searchable, indexed, and related to all the other content, and totally free. Being able to get Vaughn stuff will, will, will cost you nothing. Um, but, but the idea is to tag all of his information, what he's covering, and have it interlace into all the stuff that I'm covering and all the other stuff that's gonna come in the future. Next is um, August Davies. Um, they're an uh, animation supervisor at Sony Entertainment. Pick, oh, I'm trying to say, basically it's the PlayStation group, but there's a, it's a long name. Um, we've been friends for like 25 years. Um, they're gonna do an animation course. Again, the idea is gonna use my rigs and is gonna talk about practical animation techniques to get real shots done, real how to do it type stuff. Not just big principle stuff, it'll be there, but really like on a deadline, how are you getting things done, animation pipeline type stuff. Jason Bickerstaff, who's a good friend of mine, worked at Pixar with, for 23 years and we worked together the whole time I was there. Um, 
the, the sculpture for the character reason is actually he built and modeled that, that character. So he's gonna be doing a bunch of different stuff. Not necessarily a course, but a part of weaving into the stuff we're doing. Um, James Arknell, you all should know him. I was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Remember the Ringing Master course that we did a million years ago? And he wants to do a UV course, so he's gonna add his stuff in there, which will be great. And he's at Oculus right now. Um, and then Mark Urbano is an uh, incredibly talented concept artist. Um, I worked with him at ESC. And this is where it's gonna be fun. And this is the kind of stuff I really wanna teach. Because it's not just about what does this button do? What does this bucket do? What does this tool do? Mark and I are going to design a character. And Jason is gonna sculpt it. I'm gonna rig it. And August is gonna animate it. And not only are we gonna capture the here I am animating, here I am rigging, we're gonna capture us talking and working together. How does a professional concept artist and a professional sculptor work together to solve a problem? Because that's something you typically don't see in an education kind of context is that negotiation together. We both have deadlines, we both have different budgets. How are we gonna, how are we gonna solve this problem? So that's gonna be cool. And then finally, um, Brian Tyndall's The Art of Moving Points, which is a standard in the rigging world. Um, his iBook is gonna come to KiteString as well and be part of, the, part of the subscription. So all of his content, which is really the theory behind, and he was one of my mentors at Pixar, um, the theory behind the rigs that I've built will be woven in the same way. Again, it'll be related, so you can see the theory behind how these points need to move and how these shapes are made. Then you can see me actually doing it in the rigs and, and on the meshes it's in. And the Ringer Master course will be part of KiteString and it'll be released on August 12th. So um, kitestringonline.com is, is the site. It'll have all of my original rigging uh, materials. So the original Ringing Master course will be all of that content plus all this new stuff. And over the next uh, six to 12 months, I'm gonna be doing body rigs, we're gonna be doing quadrupeds, we're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff. All these other artists are gonna come on board. So I'm trying to create the kind of resource I wanted when I was getting started to really learn how to think about this, get the answers I need to get real work done. That's it.